Good morning, this is Mission Control Houston. Welcome and thank you for joining us today for today's edition of ISS Update this Friday, March 23rd. We're now coming to you live from inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where the team here has been monitoring the systems aboard the station and supporting the day's activities of the Expedition 30 crew members. Leading the orbit team two team here today is uh, Flight Director Mike Lammers, shown here on the right-hand side of your screen in the blue shirt with uh, astronaut Dan Tani serving as CAPCOM, who is relaying all messages up to the crew. The uh, space station with this crew aboard is now flying at an altitude of about 240 statute miles. The orbiting facility is making a southeastern tr track across the South Atlantic Ocean just between the east coast of Brazil and west coast of Africa. Circling the world every 90 minutes aboard the station, the six crew members will soon reach a close of week 15 and what has been yet another busy week of Expedition 30. The six crew members aboard the station now include NASA astronaut and commander of the complex, Dan Burbank, and flight engineers and cosmonauts Anton Shkoplarov and Anatoly Ivanishin, as well as NASA astronaut Don Pettit, cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko, and European Space Agency astronaut Andrei Kuipers. Top in the news for the International Space Station, the European Space Agency's Automated Transfer Vehicle 3, Eduardo Amaldi, successfully launched late last night as scheduled at 11.34 p.m. Central Time atop an Ariane 5 rocket from the Ariane Space Launch Site in Kourou, French Guiana. At the time of launch, the station was flying about 243 miles above the South Pacific Ocean west of Chile. Eduardo Amaldi reached its planned orbit and deployed its solar arrays about an hour and a half after it launched last night. The unmanned cargo spacecraft is then scheduled to dock to the International Space Station at 5.32 p.m. on Wednesday, March 28, delivering 220 pounds of oxygen, 628 pounds of water, 4.5 tons of propellant, and nearly 2.5 tons of dry cargo, including experiment hardware, spare parts, food, and clothing. And now for a look back at this week aboard the International Space Station. The Expedition 30 crew kicked off the week with science. Flight engineer Don Pettit worked with the Structure and Liftoff in Combustion Experiment, or SLICE, which investigates the nature of flames and microgravity. Results from SLICE could lead to improvements in pollution control technology and fuel efficiency. On Monday, flight engineer Andre Kuipers performed three experiments using the NanoRacks smartphone, which looks at how smartphones will operate in space. The hope is to use the uh, compact hardware in future research studies and to augment crew performance and productivity in operational activities. Meanwhile, Oleg Kononenko took photographs of Earth as part of the Russian Yuragan Earth Imaging Program, which is a name for the Russian word for hurricane. Uragan is a ground and space-based system for predicting natural and man-made disasters. Also on Monday, Commander Dan Burbank took water samples from the Environmental Health Monitoring System and the Water Recovery System. He also analyzed those samples with the Total Organic Carbon Analyzer, which is necessary for checking drinking water quality. On Tuesday, the crew upgraded the station communication system. Commander Dan Burbank began his day installing a high-rate communication system connector panel in the Destiny Laboratory. Additional cable routing work is planned in the next few weeks ahead, along with the installation of an improved Ethernet hub ga gateway and KU communications unit later this year to support the uh, upgrade to the station's KU band system. Once it's fully installed and operational, it will provide substantially faster uplink and downlink speeds, improved bandwidth, two extra voice communication loops, and two additional video downlink channels. Later on Tuesday, the commander inspected the flush water lines and water valve block of the waste hygiene compartment to uh, track down the source of air bubbles in the system. Flight engineers Don Pettit and Andre Kuiper spent much of their time working in concert. They uh, participated in a periodic health 
status evaluation. The results from these routine physical exams are downlinked to researchers who then track any changes to crew health due to the long-term exposure to microgravity. Also on Tuesday, Pettit began his work to load software on a laptop computer associated with an express rack that enables quick, simple integration for up to 10 experiment payloads. Then in the uh, Russian side of the house, Kononenko, Shkoplarov, and Ivanishin had performed some routine maintenance on the life support system and the electron oxygen generator and conducted several experiments. Shkoplarov had also worked with the uh, BAR experiment, which looks at methods and instruments for detecting the location of a loss of pressure aboard the station. He also worked with Ivanishin later with the typology experiment that studies a crew member's psychophysical state during long-duration spaceflight. Then on Wednesday, station residents got ready for ATV-3, the Europe's third cargo craft, the Automated Transfer Vehicle 3, that was set to launch Thursday night at 11.34 p.m. Central Time from Kourou, French Guiana. The Eduardo Amaldi spacecraft that successfully launched last night is now on its way to the International Space Station with its 7.2 tons of cargo. Flight engineers Oleg Kononenko and Andre Kuypers reviewed rendezvous and docking procedures ahead of the uh, Automated Transfer Vehicle 3 launch. They are the two that are responsible for monitoring its automated arrival and docking. Before beginning their ATV-3 reviews, Kuypers wore gear for an experiment that uh, observes the decrease in blood pressure that occurs in microgravity. Kononenko took part in a study that assesses a crew member's mental state and how it impacts spaceflight performance. The rest of the six-member crew focused on science and station maintenance on Wednesday. Commander Burbank had taken high-resolution photographs of crystal samples from the binary colloidal alloy test 5 experiment. During the uh, afternoon, he switched hats from a scientist to a plumber and removed and replaced a pre-treat water pump on the waste hygiene compartment. Pettit then changed out and uh, reconfigured laptop computers on those two express computers, one in the Kibot laboratory and also one in the Destiny laboratory. He then scanned his legs with an ultrasound for the sprint experiment, which evaluates exercise and its ability to minimize the effects of long-duration space mission. Here now we're getting a uh, live view outside the International Space Station. Yesterday, on Thursday, the European cargo craft that is now on its way to the International Space Station was the primary focus of work aboard the station. Commander Burbank, Pettit, and Kuypers worked on the stowage and relocation of cargo in the permanent multipurpose module, also known as Leonardo, to make room for the cargo that will soon arrive aboard the ATV after it docks to the station next week on March 28th. Yesterday, also, Kuypers performed maintenance to the water recovery system. Evanation worked with the pneumocard experiment, which observes the uh, adaptation of the cardiovascular system during long-term missions. And uh, Kononenko took more photographs as part of that Russian Yuragan, or hurricane experiment, that aims to, to uh, predict natural and man-made disasters. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency's Automated Transfer Vehicle 3 was set for launch as the crew went to bed Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Central Time. While the crew was scheduled to be asleep, Mission Control Houston uplinked real-time video of last night's successful launch from Kourou, French Guiana. The uh, spacecraft with its seven tons of supplies is now en route to the space station. Eduardo Amaldi is scheduled to arrive and link up with the station next Wednesday, March 28, with a docking time at 5.32 p.m. Central Time. You're now getting a live view inside the International Space Station flight control room where the Orbit 2 team continues to monitor the systems and the activities of the crew aboard the International Space Station. Today, this Friday, March 23rd, Eduardo Amaldi's anticipated arrival at the station takes center stage aboard the International Space Station. Commander Burbank and his uh, crew will spend a few hours today moving some items out of storage for the permanent multipurpose module to make room for the cargo now on its way to the station, set to arrive next week. Meanwhile, flight engineers Oleg Kononenko and Andre Kuypers are participating in 
onboard training with the rendezvous and docking simulation to practice and prepare for the arrival of the European Space Agency's Automated Transfer Vehicle 3. Kononinko and Kuipers are the two crew members who will be responsible for monitoring the spacecraft as it approaches and docks to the aft port of the Zvezda module. And here is some animation of the ATV-3 as it approaches the International Space Station. And it's what Kononenko and Kuipers will be monitoring next Wednesday, March 28th. Again, that docking is scheduled to take place at 5.32 p.m. Central Time. Also today, Commander Burbank has uh, conducted the six-month maintenance tune-up on the onboard treadmill, one of three types of exercise equipment in the Space Gym. Other equipment includes a uh, stationary bicycle and the advanced resistive exercise device that simulates weightlifting here on Earth. He also spent some time cleaning uh, bacteria filters in nodes 1, 2, and 3 of the space station, while a uh, flight engineer, Don Pettit, is working with the microgravity science glove box to conduct the structure liftoff and combustion experiment, or SLICE, which investigates the nature of flames and microgravity. Results from SLICE could lead to improvements in pollution control technology and fuel efficiency. And later today, Commander Burbank and Flight Engineers Don Pettit and Andre Kuipers will take a break to talk with Bloomberg News Moscow as part of a uh, documentary on U.S.-Russian space cooperation. That interview will air live here on NASA Television at 10.40 a.m. Central Time. And that's a wrap of this week aboard the International Space Station. This is Mission Control, Houston.